Welcome to session four. This lesson is going to go along with our September 1st lab class. And today we're going to cover AutoCAD floor plans. And I do want to say before I jump into today's lesson that of the assignment one submissions that I've seen, they're all looking fantastic. And they're exactly what I'm looking for. I just basically wanted you to mess around with AutoCAD, get your bearings and kind of begin to understand what the DFL template is all about and what it does for us. So that having been said, let's get into today's session and more specifically, assignment two. So as I mentioned in class, assignment two is going to be all about producing the CAD files for exercise one that you did in Design Studio. So you should be very familiar with this plan and its elevations and the sections through it. And now we're basically going to replicate everything that you did manually and we're going to put it in the computer. To start off, I'm going to show you a pretty quick and easy way to copy a floor plan. And it involves having first the PDF or a JPEG of the drawing file and basically importing it into AutoCAD to trace. The easiest way to import is simply to drag the file into your AutoCAD workspace. But you can also go over here to the Insert tab up top and do PDF import. And that'll basically take you to your file browser where you can select the PDF. But what we're going to do is drag it from our downloads or our desktop or wherever we have it and just drop it right there in the window. Now this PDF document has multiple pages. So what we need to do is select the page number that we want to bring into AutoCAD. And for us, we want to bring in page number one. So we can just press enter here. Insertion point, it doesn't matter. We can drag it around just so it's on our screen basically. And then scale factor also doesn't matter right now because we're going to adjust that later. So let's just say that because it's manageable and then it sends us into our rotation factor if we just hold shift like we learned last time it turns on orthography and it keeps everything at a right angle so just shift and go out to the right here so that it remains vertical click and it imports your file kind of a cool feature of AutoCAD is that when we bring in a PDF file uh, you'll notice if you look at this PDF it's a white background with black objects on it but because AutoCAD knows you're working in a black workspace, it's actually going to invert the colors for you so that you can actually see what you want to work with, which is very nice. So the first thing that we want to do here after we have it in our workspace is we want to rotate it. So we can just come in and select it how we know already how to do and go to rotate or type in rotate, uh, select a base point that could be the corner and then uh, hold shift or make sure you're aligned with uh, a guide like this uh, either way and we're going to just rotate it to where it's horizontally oriented and here we have the file that we're going to work with now that we have our image in and it's rotated and our orientation is looking good we do need to resize this image and we need to do that because this drawing needs to exist in our computer at full scale and so typically if this weren't an exercise floor plan it would have a graphic scale but it has none and there is no uh, scale noted so we just need to interpret it and kind of assume here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say the distance between these grid lines is four feet and in order to scale this image up to where these grid lines actually exist four feet apart I'm gonna go to the scale command you can type in scale or go to scale I'm going to just click randomly to set the base point on one of these grid lines and then it's going to say specify the scale factor or and we're going to do or so we're just going to type in R R means reference and our reference length is going to be from one grid line holding ortho to have a straight line down to another grid line and right now that's set at one inch we're going to set it at like I said four feet so four feet enter and it's probably going to disappear because it was made so much bigger when we scaled it up. But anyways, after we have it scaled up, we now have a file where all of the grid lines are four feet away from each other. As you can see, I just drew a quick line there and it's roughly four feet between each one of the grid lines. And I'm just assuming that because it gives us a nice spacing for the windows. You can say maybe the stairs here 
are four feet wide. This entrance is four feet wide. It's probably on the big side, but it's a nice round number and easy for us to work with for the sake of this tutorial. And now with everything oriented and scaled properly, we can start tracing. And the first step in tracing is creating a new layer. And we're only doing that because the default layer is white and we're working, if your interface is like mine, we're working on white lines on a black background. And so more white lines are just gonna be confusing. So we're gonna press layer properties. It's gonna open up our layers window. And from there, we're gonna to go to this button right here, which is a bunch of layers with a sun basically. And we're gonna press it to create a new layer, which we can call walls appropriately. And then over here, we double click where it says white and we change it to something like red because red is very easy to see against black and white. But we're not done. We need to go up here to the layers and actually make walls, our red layer, the active layer. Now we can finally start tracing. So we're gonna do our line command or go up to the toolbar and press line. And we're gonna go to the center line of these walls actually. We're not gonna go to the outsides. We're gonna go to the center line. And I'll show you why it's a, a real time saving thing more than anything. But uh, because we are working at all right angles first, we want to turn on ortho. It's just gonna be better for us in the long run. So with ortho on, our line tool selected, we're gonna press right here at the intersection of these two grid lines because that is the center line of this northernmost wall. And we're gonna press right here and then we're gonna actually type in 28 feet because the end of the wall is seven grid spaces away at four feet, that's 28 feet. So our wall is gonna be uh, 28 feet long at the center to center points, if that makes sense. And it'll make more sense uh, when we get into it later. But we basically are trying to create a 28 foot wall here. And then we have another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces here. So that's another 28 feet. So we type in 28 feet going down. And then we have four spaces. So that is, if I know my math, 16 up to that's eight you kind of see what we're doing here we're going over one here and that is four feet so we press enter one more time to get out of that command and we've created right here in all of these places the center lines of these walls and we have a couple more walls here that we're going to fill in so i'm going to go back into the walls command i'm going to go down here 16 feet that's four spaces gonna go oh I did inches instead of feet 16 feet another 16 feet over I did inches again you'll understand why when you go to Revit because Revit works in feet and this works in inches uh, so 16 feet press enter and then our final wall right here. So what we're gonna do is we actually need to align this eight feet off of this wall, as you can see, because it's two grid lines from the outside. So we can actually go up here to the corner, just extend ourselves a line up here, click up there randomly, and then go over eight feet. And then we can go back down from there and intersect at a perpendicular point our exterior line. Then we can press escape to get out and we can actually delete our guidelines there, just leaving this one. And then we go back into our line command, go right there at the intersection, uh, which is the endpoint. Uh, I don't know how it's gonna show up for you. It'll be either be an endpoint or an intersection point, uh, but either way we select there and we're going down three grid lines. So that's 12 feet. And then we're going left four more feet. At this point, all of our walls are drawn in. So just so we can see what we've done, I'm gonna move over our guide and delete that little cheat line. And here is the basis of the floor plane that we're gonna be working with. With all of our center lines set, we are now going to give these walls 
some thickness. And we can do that easily by using the offset command. So we can type in offset and press enter. And here it's going to ask us to specify an offset distance. So I want these walls to be six inches thick. And the offset command works by offsetting on one side of the object at a time. So half of six inches is three inches. So I'm going to type in three inches as our offset distance. And from here, I'm going to select the object we want to offset. And depending on which side of the object I then put my cursor, it's going to offset on that side or the other. So I want to offset to the right side. I'm going to drag my cursor over to the right side and click to end the command. And then click the object one more time, drag my cursor to the left side to offset to the left side, click. And here we have a six inch wall with the center line still there. And we're going to go around our model and do the same thing on every center line. So we can get six inch walls throughout our entire project. And when you have a project that's much bigger than this, it gets tedious and it absolutely gets annoying. But this is manageable. This is totally fine. And just like that, we're done offsetting. And having finished offsetting, what we're now going to do is delete all of those center lines so that we're left with only the outlines. So we're going to go through one by one, deleting all of that hard work that we did initially. And we're left with something that is more of a semblance of a floor plan than what we had before. And here, we have some corners to clean up. So we're going to use our fillet command. Now, we're going to make sure that our radius is set to zero. So we're going to press R and then zero and enter to set our radius to zero and then go corner to corner, setting these corners with a radius of zero and creating nice 90 degree angles there. And to get the fillet command back up, we're going to press enter every time or our right mouse button if you have that set from our first tutorial. So right mouse button because the command does go away annoyingly every time you fill it an object. So we're going to do this on our interior and exterior corners all around the project. Again, another tedious process. And when we go into Revit, I think you're going to like Revit a lot better because it does a lot of this dirty work for you. And there's a reason it's the industry standard right now. And we're going to leave this for later because that requires another command. And then we're going to fill it our last corner. And we have some nice clean corners there. To clean up this section right here, we want to select these two walls, type in trim, and select between the walls right here. And that is going to give us uh, a space in this horizontal wall right there. And then we select the bottom part of this top wall, type trim again, and get rid of these corners. Now that can also be done by typing fill it again and just filleting these corners or you can trim them. That's totally a preference thing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't seem like either one is quicker either. So uh, whatever is easier for you or you like better, you can do in that kind of a situation. But in AutoCAD, when you're having uh, walls joined or butting together in this way, you're going to be doing a lot of that and it gets tedious. So uh, develop a good system and whatever works for you is totally fine. And finally, in the middle of our file here, we're left with three open-ended walls. We're simply going to go back up to our line tool. And the easiest way to do it is just closing these in using our line tool and pressing escape in between each one so that we're not creating a continuous line. And then we've now created a nice closed wall layout. The problem with recording these videos is I record one segment and then I stop and watch TikTok for five minutes and forget where I was at. So we've created this wall layout as I talked about and now what we need to do is place some windows in it. And if it's easier for you, 
you can drag this back over and adjust it and trace it some more, but we can just look at our grid lines and they can tell us exactly where to put the windows on the floor plan. In order to do this, we're going to do some quick and dirty math, kind of some back of the napkin stuff. So we know that there's four feet between each grid line and here it looks like this window is open for two grid lines and it's one grid line off of each wall. So that's four feet, but these grid lines run at the center of the wall. So you're going to add in three inches there and we see there's a bit of an overhang here. Let's call that another three inches. So this is really going to be four feet and then another six inches. So our window is going to exist four foot six off of the outside of this wall. So we're going to create another guideline. Just go out however much you want to go out and then go down four feet, six inches. So four comma six quotation or four apostrophe six quotation, four foot six, enter. And then there we are four foot six down and we can go over and create the first side of that window. And like I said, that window is two grid lines wide, but it comes in three inches there and it comes in three inches here. So it's going to be actually eight feet minus six inches, if that makes sense. So eight feet between these two grid lines, minus three inches here, minus three inches here. So it's going to be seven foot six wide. So we start again on this line at any point. It could be the end point or uh, the nearest point or an intersection or wherever you want to start. And we go down from there, seven feet, six inches. Press enter and go over, press escape, delete all of these other helpers. And here we have the width of our window. And from here, we can select these lines, do trim and get rid of that right there. From there, we use our fillet command and we go to each one of these window jams and we finish off the opening in the wall, just like that. And following those same steps, we can go through and put in the other one, two, three, four windows that we have in the project. And I'm going to show you how to do this next one right here and then leave you to do the rest of these. You should be able to get them after we do a couple together. So this, as we know, is one grid line off of the edge of this wall. And like we said, once again, this is at the center line of the wall. So there's three inches on this side and then it's inset three inches there. So it's actually four foot six off of the outside edge of this wall. So we're going to create a guide, go down, and then we're going to go over four feet, six inches and go up, press enter or escape to get out of the command. And from here or at the end, wherever you want to do it, you delete your little helper lines. And then we know this is one grid line wide and each side is inset by three inches. So we have a four foot grid line space, minus three inches here, minus three inches here. And that's three foot six. So what I would do here, and you can do it a different way, you can go through and create another thing here that is three foot six. I would just select it, type in offset, type in three feet, six inches. And there I have my window thickness. From there, select both edges, type in trim, get rid of those lines in there, go to fillet, fillet the jam of each one of these windows. And I will show you another thing. If you say you want to fillet these two, but you select out here and in there, it's actually going to fillet this other angle, if that makes sense. And you'll recognize that and learn your lesson early with that. If you select outside here, it's going to create a corner just like that. So we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is actually go back into our fillet command and we want the corner to exist inside here. So we stay inside there with our clicks with the fillet command. There we go. We've created another 
opening for a window. I'm going to create the other three real quick and get back to you shortly. So, uh, okay, I've come back in real quick to show you a little kind of trick that I figured out while I was doing this. But basically, as you can see here on the document, these windows are the same distance from this corner here. So they're four foot six away here and four foot six away here. Same up here. What you can actually do is do our blue selection, which is just gonna select things that exist within the box as opposed to our green, which is gonna select everything that it intersects. So we're gonna select our two pieces of the jam right there. We can actually mirror them at this angle right here. So we go to the endpoint or the corner and we go down at a 45. And for this, we're gonna to have to turn off our ortho mode and come down. This is actually getting into something else entirely, uh, but we have our tracking and uh, angle settings down here. We're gonna set it to the second one, which is 45, 90, 135, 180, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So every 45 degrees, basically. We're gonna select that and it's gonna snap us to 45 degrees right there. And we're gonna click it and don't erase the source objects, so no. And then our jam has been added right where it needs to be up here. So it's right there and now it's right there. So we can select these pieces of the jam again, press trim, take out that middle section. And that's accomplished the exact same thing as what we've been doing, but we don't have to go through and set up our guides and do everything like that. We just have to select the pieces of the jam Make sure that down here in our uh, polar tracking, we have the 45 degree option set or an option with 45 degrees. So that could be 23, 45, 68, 90 right there or whatever. Um, but then we can select these pieces of the jam, go into mirror, go up to the corner and mirror them 45, just like that and have our window jam placed up there. So that was a quick thing that I just realized and hopefully that made some sense. And if not, you can obviously rewind and watch that again. Now with all of our window openings set, we can create the windows themselves. And we're gonna wanna create a new layer for these window objects because we're gonna have a difference in line weight. So these walls are gonna be at a thicker line weight than our windows will be. So we go to layer properties and press our add layer button, which is the sun type windows or name it whatever you want to name it and let's change the color to yellow we're gonna X out up here change our active layer to windows and then go to our line tool from there we're gonna zoom into one of these jam openings and we're gonna create just two lines that are extended off of the wall like this and these are currently six inches apart because we have a six inch wall for the sake of this model let's make them uh, four inches apart. So we're going to select one and bring it in one inch. And we're going to select the other and bring it in one inch. This one actually got moved down, so I'm just going to move it back up. And now our lines are four inches apart. From there, we want to make them two inches thick. So we can simply offset this. So select it type in off or offset, make our distance two inches, bring it down here, and then we can select this red line, go up here to our layers, and just change it to windows so it becomes yellow and a part of the windows layer. Now we go through our fillet command, fillet these corners, and we've created one piece of jam right here. Now what we wanna do is copy this piece of jam at each one of these openings right here. So we can create a little cheater line right here that's gonna be midpoint to midpoint. So it exists at the midpoint of the smaller line and it connects to the midpoint of this larger line here. We can select all of these objects and press copy. We can move it down, rotate it, 180 degrees, and then selecting this endpoint right here, we can move it to where this endpoint is at this 
midpoint. So basically this allows us to copy these jams all the way around our model and keep it centered on the wall itself. So we can select it, control C and control V. Rotate it, move it to where it's centered on the wall, just like that using our little cheater. And then we can go and in this case, use the mirror tool. Don't erase the source objects. Move. Endpoint to midpoint, if that makes sense. And we're gonna go around our model and do this at every window opening. And I'll meet you back here after doing that shortly. And I'm back now having put all of the jams inside of the openings. And now we can go around and delete our little cheater lines. That is the one thing about AutoCAD that I don't like. It's not super intuitive to center things. So what you have to do is create a lot of these little cheater lines, just like this. And now we can put in the pane of glass itself by just connecting the jam pieces midpoint to midpoint like that. And we can repeat the line command over and over like this. And if you find it quicker to copy those panes of glass, you can do that too. I just use the line tool because it's super quick and easy. And there we have created our windows. We now want to add another level of refinement to this floor plan, and that's going to be all of the objects that are beyond. So what I'm first going to do is create another layer, and I'm going to call it beyond. And by beyond, I mean objects past the cut plane or in the background of the cut plane itself. And so when we create this beyond layer, it's going to exist at an even thinner line type than the windows are. So I'm going to have a line here. I'm going to put a line here and here, and here and here. And what this beyond line signifies is the sill of the window because this window doesn't go all the way to the ground. It stops at a certain point in the elevation. So let's say we have an elevation that looks like this and a window on that elevation right here. This beyond line represents this bottom sill right here. And so we want to put that in just because it gives some context to the window. And now if we didn't have a window that stopped and it went all the way down to the floor, we would actually eliminate this first line and maybe eliminate this line as well uh, because there's nothing beyond it that uh, becomes a sill of some sort and we only might keep this line because it represents the outside of the building. But in our case, the window does stop as we can see in the elevation files and so we have to put our little sill lines in there for uh, everything that's beyond. So I'm going to do this on the other windows here and once again I'll be back with you shortly. Okay here we are with all of the beyond lines put in for these window sills and you kind of have to do some mental interpretation here because we don't have any line widths actually set in our model space right here uh, but they will be set when we end up exporting this file as a PDF and plotting it on a piece of paper. But for now, we just have to look at these different colors and realize that they mean different objects and they also symbolize different layer thicknesses. So um, it may be confusing at first, but after a while you'll understand the hierarchy here of what we're trying to accomplish with the different colors because they do represent different thicknesses. One of the final major steps to finalizing this floor plan is adding in the door that would theoretically exist here because this is the entrance from the exterior of the home to the interior. We do need a door here. If this were a real plan, it would have a door. So we need to create that door. So first up, we can just take a line here and find out what this width is. So this is three foot six. From there, this direction, let's say if it's an in-swing door, it's gonna be in this direction. 
we're going to create a line that is three feet six inches and then we're going to make a door that's uh let's say an inch and a half thick so another inch and a half there bring it back down three feet six and close it off so we've created right here a three foot six door panel now in order to show the swing we're going to do an arc we can do in this case start and direction arc so the start is going to be here where the door is when it's closed the end is going to be right here where the door is when it's open and then the direction is going to be perpendicular to this start point right here so we go at a right angle from that start or basically zero degrees from that start point click it and we've set our door and our door swing and now with the exception of our stairs we have completed all the doors windows and walls of this house one of the last major components before we move on to creating the stairs is adding the door right here at the front and in order to facilitate a good door swing we need to add some things to this model so we need to go back to our walls layer and set that as our active layer go to our line tool and fill in that space right there offset this line by six inches just like that and then we use our fillet command to square off these corners and we basically have enclosed this space right here and what that allows us to do is create a door that's appropriately installed in our floor plan if i were doing it a quick way i would set the door out here and have it swinging in this way but that's bad design so we're going to do it the right way here and install it as an outswing here as it should be from here we're going to create some cheater lines so we're going to go in let's say three inches we're going to go over all the way here there's one cheater line go up three inches here go all the way over here delete our initial guides select these two trim get rid of them fill at this opening this is all very similar to how we created the window openings and there we have a door opening and we can use our line tool once again to find out what that width is and that width is three feet what we can also do there is type in length and this length is going to do the same thing that we just did but it's a temporary thing that pops up so we do this end point to this end point and we see three feet right there and if we click and finalize it'll give us more information about that it'll say distance three feet and the angle is such and such and all the information you may need so from here we can start to begin designing our door panel itself so we're going to go to layer properties and like we've done a couple times before create a new layer called doors change the color to let's say cyan so it's distinguished from everything else set it as our active layer and we can start to create our panel so like we know already this is a three foot opening so from this exterior corner right here I can make a three foot line to the left now selecting that line I want to offset it by let's say two inches to give you the thickness of the door itself and then we can use our line tool once again to finish off the panel it's in, in its entirety and so there's that then we go to our arc tool and in the secondary menu here the drop down we want to choose start and direction our start is going to be this bottom left corner our end is going to be this top left corner and that's going to give us our arc our direction if we have ortho snapping on it's going to be straight down or if we have our uh, polar tracking set to 45s it's going to be straight down and we just set it like that so here we have our door panel and then this graphical arc that is going to show our contractor eventually the direction of the door swing and how it swings and how far it swings and it's just uh, graphically how we show doors and i think you'll learn more about that next semester in woods 
The last major component that we need to introduce is the stairs. And like every other thing that we've done here, the first step is creating a new layer so that we can distinguish it from everything else in the project. Picking yet another new color, let's say magenta this time, exiting out of there and setting stairs as our active layer. Because this is a typical and a very common U-shaped stair, what we first need to do is count the risers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine on one side, which theoretically you can assume there's maybe nine on the other. So 18 rises total, let's say it's six inches, that's nine feet floor to floor. That's the kind of fun math you can look forward to the rest of your life as an architect there. So because this is a U stair, we need to find the center line because there's a set of risers on the left and a set of risers on the right. And we're just gonna call this a four foot landing. And we can do this very easily using our offset command. So we're going to select this offset four, yeah, how about four feet, not four inches, so four feet. We can do our offset command again and do one foot this time and do it two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine risers here, just like we have nine risers there. That means we have 18 total. Our next step is to select all of these lines change them to the stairs layer. And now using this, we can trim the excess here. And using this, we can trim the excess here. And we have the basic layout of our stairs. To finalize the graphical appearance of these stairs, we need to bring in the brake line like we have here. And everything above the brake line essentially is gonna be a dashed line because it's overhead. It's above the cut that we're making. So, like we've done now a million times before, we're gonna create another layer. And we're just gonna call this other because it's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna do our brake line, it's gonna do our arrow that's showing the direction of the stairs, and it may do a couple of other di diagrammatic things in our project. So, we're gonna do that, set it to a whole new color. That orange looks nice. And somewhere out in space, after setting our active layer to other, we're gonna create a break line. So it's just a straight line across. You may go up at an angle, back down at an angle, and you wanna meet right back where you came from. And then go out that way. So it should look something like this. This is a rough one. If you work in a firm, they're probably gonna give you a standard on this. They're actually gonna give you a standard on everything. So you don't have to create brake lines and you don't have to create doors and windows and panels like that. You're just gonna kind of copy and paste them in. So it's much nicer. But we have this brake line and we're gonna drag it to where it's right where we wanna cut. We're gonna select it, rotate it, oops. Select it, rotate it using the middle point here as uh, center of rotation, give it a little bit of an angle, and shorten up these ends. And I just did that by clicking on the end point right there and bringing it in a little bit along the line. As you can see, as you move along the line, your object snapping still works. So they were going to the middle, they were going to the nearest points. Uh, we can just drag it anywhere right there. And here we have a brake line. And so as I said, everything above this brake line, so every, so these treads right here on the right side, they're gonna be above the brake line. So they need to be dashed. And the easiest way to do that is by simply using our trim command and taking them out in the first place. From there, yet another layer, we can call this overhead.
and yet another color. Where should we go? Nice turquoise or something there. We've got that. We're going to set overhead as our active layer. And then we're going to fill in these stairs once again where they were. That's all fine and dandy, but what we need to do now is make these dashed. So we go back to layer properties, go back to overhead, and under line type, we click on continuous, and this select line type window should pop up. You're actually gonna load it, and it gives you a bunch of these CAD standard line types. We're just gonna find ISO dash. That's all we need to do. We're just going to set it as our line type. And from there, in our model space, you may or may not see, depending on how your AutoCAD is set up, these dash lines. But as long as it's set, and we'll see this during the export session, uh, they should come out as dashed lines. So you're all good there. And so here we have our staircase with a brake line and everything above the brake line is now dashed. We're going to switch quickly back to our other, making it the active layer. And from the center line of this stair tread, we're going to go up until maybe we're three quarters of the way through this last tread. And we're going to stop our line. And from there, we can angle down at 45 and do it six or seven inches in that direction mirror it along this axis or along its line. We're going to select no. We want to keep both copies. And then we've created an arrow. And that once again, that goes on the same layer as our break line because that's going to be our graphical representation layer essentially. And now some finishing touches. We are going to add in this step right here and this overhead line right here. So we've already created the overhead line layer. We're just going to make it the active layer. And we're going to bring the line down here. And we're going to bring it over there. And you can just fillet them like this to clean them up. And we've taken care of that line. And now we want to create this step down. And that step down is beyond. We're not cutting through the step, so it's going to exist on the beyond layer. So we go to beyond. And what we need to do is actually calculate where it exists. So this is right off of the second grid line here from the left side. And let's say this is like we've been using the whole time, three inches away from the grid line. So it's going to be four feet if you go grid line to grid line, and then three feet or three inches in that direction. But this side of the wall is also three inches that way. So it really turns out to be, once again, four feet off of this wall. Hopefully that made some level of sense. I kind of confused myself there. So we're going to create a cheater line and just send it perpendicular down and then over four feet as we just calculated and send it that way. And from there we can delete both of our helpers there. And if you ever get in a situation where you have two lines overlapped and you are having a problem selecting one of them, Remember that you have this selection tool and the blue selection is only going to select whatever's inside that box. So if it's shorter, you can easily select it. And, you know, the green one's not going to help you at all, but the blue one, it's only going to capture that smaller item there and you can delete it easily. And we're going to do the same on this side. We're going to go in four feet from here. We're going to create our line. Press enter, I'm going to drag it over to where it's perpendicular to there. And then finally we can use our fillet tool again. Oops. To finish off that step. And this is your end result for the floor plan. So if you followed along with this, I'm incredibly impressed because I've confused myself a few times along the way here. Uh, but you should have something close to this. And if you don't, we can certainly talk about it in class and help you better understand how to create this kind of a drawing. But in terms of assignment two, 
this is it. This is what we're looking at for assignment two. So if you turn in something looking like this or something similar to this, we're probably going to be okay. So thank you so much for watching this video. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out during class. Or if you'd like to schedule some office hours, let me know and we can get together and get everything figured out for you. So thanks a lot.